Earlier today, India elected its 15th president, Draupadi Murmu, a name lesser known in Indian politics. Now Draupadi Murmu will become India's new president. So, in the 15th Rashtrapati, Draupadi Murmu will be the 25th Rashtrapati. In the name of the Congress, you have to be afraid of me. Draupadi Murmu, a BJP candidate, has won the presidential elections out in India and will become the new president of India. I've been following this news with interest because it changes everything in India and truly tells us what will happen next. India's current president, Ramnath Kovin's term ends tomorrow and president-elect Draupadi Murmu will be sworn in. When she does, folks, she'll become the second female president of India and the first president from a tribal area of India, as well as the youngest president of India. So the question is, why did Murmu win and what impact will it have on Indian politics? Let me give you some further background on Murmu. She's 64 years old, is a female politician from the Indian state of Orisha, one of the oldest and largest tribal areas in India. Originally a school teacher, she later joined the political arena, held several public positions in the government sector and became the first female governor of Jharkhand. A state in India. The Bharatiya Janata Party of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi played a very clever card here. They nominated Murmu from a list of candidates last year. There were other candidates from many different backgrounds and castes, but they chose Murmu mainly because of her three major personal background characteristics, and that is firstly her origin from something called listed tribes, which is sort of treated as lower caste too, and at the same time, She's of course a female politician. In India, people from the listed tribe are a special social phenomenon. People from listed tribes live in relatively backward social environments and relatively weak economical settings. So the listed tribes share a lot of things in common to what we call the scheduled caste in India, which is of course the lower caste. And people belonging to those two groups account for a considerable proportion of the Indian population. And of course, President-elect Murmu, who was born in a listed tribe, has a strong appeal to these people. And the BJP will play on this card to now appeal for a larger vote base. You bet she's going to become a spokesperson for the scheduled tribes, as well as the scheduled castes, as well as female voters in the country and voters from relatively underdeveloped rural areas. The role of an Indian president is merely ceremonial. Although they can command armies, declare war or even peace, an Indian president is a little like our Auntie Betty, able to sign and give the final approval of bills passed through parliament. And that's also another interesting point, because I see the BJP using Murmur's multiple identities to push through major bills in the Indian parliament. So Murmur will become a head of state supported by the Indian Prime Minister who holds real power. The BJP now has a huge advantage in the upcoming elections in 2024. However, having said that, the BJP has always been in a position of power out there thanks to the dysfunctional Congress Party, which is one of the main opposition parties out there. The Congress Party is one of India's traditional parties, but its political map is getting smaller as the party has lost several elections in recent years. The main dilemma facing the Congress Party is that the party really does not have a credible, strong, leader. That's it. You know, that is what's keeping the Congress party backward. They don't have a leader with strong personal charisma, neither a leader who can unify everybody. The thing is, India has always been in a mess since independence. The country was based on a very false notion of secularism. It was never really secular. Personally, I think when Pakistan declared the Islamic State of Pakistan, India should have declared Hindustan. But powers during that time had secularism in mind and they completely ballsed it up. Pardon my French, but they created an utter sham and mockery of secularism. And today you'll see Indian secularism was truly fake and that's why the hardline hindered for nationalist leaders who are appealing to a lot of voters out there. Congress only used the notion of secular for vote bank politics and that is the truth. This vote bank was created by mixing some lower castes and Muslims and grouping them into one. This meant that in the name of protecting 
Indian secularism. The Congress Party were introducing things like having job quotas where a percentage of jobs in India must by law be given to people from a particular group. Now I don't really agree with that model because jobs should go to people who are able to do it and make a good job of it. But the Congress Party obviously had other things in mind. The Congress leaders were the ones holding lavish iftar parties during Ramadan in the name of secularism. Sorry but Ramadan is not a time to hold lavish parties especially parties that are funded by Indian taxpayers. और अब कांग्रेस की भी इफ्तार पार्टी हो रही है उसकी तस्वीरें भी हम आपको दिखाएंगे कांग्रेस मुख्यालय में इफ्तार पार्टी का ये आयोजन किया गया है देन देर वॉज दी हज सब्सिडी द हज सब्सिडी वॉज अ सब्सिडी बेस्ड ऑन रिलीजन दैट वॉज गिवन टू हज पिलग्रिम्स बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिस्काउंटेड एयर फेयर सो दैट पिलग्रिम कैन फ्लाई टू मेक फॉर हज नाउ आई एम नॉट ब्लेमिंग एवरीथिंग ऑन कांग्रेस हेयर बिकॉज द प्रोग्राम हैज इट्स ओरिजिन इन ब्रिटिश कलोनियल एरा नाउ दर इज अ सरप्राइज एंड गेस वॉट द कांग्रेस डेड इन post colonial era they expanded the program in 1959 with the hajj act so just to promote secularism the congress party have actually hurt the muslims of india by putting so called secularism on the shoulders of the 14% muslims out there and of course muslims and also the lower caste people just kept on voting for the congress because they were getting what they wanted all the time and of course that's not really secularism is it I highly doubt a Hindu Rashtra will form but with a BJP president who's also from a listed tribe one thing for sure is BJP will win the elections in 2024 and that will happen thanks to the so-called secularists these secularists in India didn't complain about the unfair job quota system and the subsidies for religious pilgrimage paid by the Indian taxpayers they are now screaming democracy is dying and that secular India is over They really need to start questioning the past history of so-called Indian secularism. It was never there in the first place. Having said all that, I hope all Indians find a common ground to unite. People should be fighting poverty, not each other. With the same breath, I also say India and Pakistan should have some sort of dialogue before it's too late.